Glory, hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. And welcome to episode 31. Forgive me, episode 73 of A Work in Progress. It's truly good to be in the land of the living. I thank the Lord for life, health, and strength. I thank Him for salvation. And I thank Him for this opportunity to read His Word. I also like to thank those of you that take the time to come by and hear the Word of God. And I like to thank Robin Mabin Productions for allowing this word to go to be broadcast on her station. Before we begin reading the word, please go with me in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you as humbly as I know how. Confess the Lord that in you I live and move and have my being, and without you I can do nothing. Lord, confessing that I need you more than my necessary food. Lord, confessing that every good and perfect gift that's within me came from you. Because you tell me in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But in my spirit is where you dwell. And your character is love, joy, peace, temperance, kindness, long-suffering. And Lord, I thank you as you continue to show mercy unto me. I thank you and ask that you help me to be merciful. Lord, for you said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And Lord, I know I need mercy. Lord, thank you for watching over the president and his family. Thank you, Lord God, for not letting things be as they could be here in America. America has work to do, Lord. And the only way she'll get it right is if she comes through you. Lord, I heard about the the bikers brawl and shootout. Lord, there's children starving. There's so much heartache going on in the world today. And you're the mender of broken hearts and broken spirits. You're the healer of the soul, mind, and body of man. And Lord... All you require is for us to have faith, sincere faith in you and your ability, your, the work that you did at the whipping post, the work that you did on the cross, and the work that you did when you rose the third day, and I, that all power in heaven and earth has been given unto you. Lord, I submit myself unto you this day, your word, your will, and your way, and I resist the devil, and he shall flee or run away in utter terror. Lord, there's a lost and a dying world that needs to see you manifested. Help me become that instrument of peace. Help me be that vessel for which you can be seen manifested through me. Lord, take these lips of clay and edify the body of Christ through the reading of your word. Help me not to just be a hearer, but a doer of your word also, Lord. And you said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you said you would give me the strength to do that which is needed, Lord. Because without you I can do nothing, so I have to depend on you. And Lord, I ask that you watch over my loved ones one by one and name by name. And my brethren and their loved ones one by one and name by name. Lord, remember your pastors, evangelists, apostles, prophets, and teachers. And us, your sheep and your lambs. Help us to stand on your truth. Help us to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Help us, Lord God, to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. So when it comes time to stand against evil, that we stand on your side, Lord. Help me, Lord God. Help me, Lord God. For truly, without you, I can do nothing. I love you, Lord. I need you, and I appreciate you. And, Lord, I know that in you... I live and move and have my being. Help me to truly understand it. Help me to truly, truly understand it. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your patience. 
things could have been a whole lot worse. I could have woke up and would not even be able to read my word, would have to hide out to read my word, wouldn't be able to express my love for you openly. Lord, there's places in this world that if you say you're a Christian, they'll kill you. Lord, there's places in this world, and even in America, they're getting tighter and tighter about things that you can say as a Christian. It seems to be that they're calling evil good and good evil, and that's just aligning with your scriptures. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you again for this opportunity to read your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Today we're continuing on in the Old Testament. We're in the book of Judges, King James Version, chapter 12, verse 1. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon, and didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon, and when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands, and passed over against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead, and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim, because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim, among the Ephraimites, and among the Manessites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said, Nay, then said they unto him, Say thou, Shibotheth. And he said, Sibotheth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite, and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. And after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had thirty sons and thirty daughters, whom he sent abroad, and took in thirty daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan, and was buried in Bethlehem. And after him, Elon, a Zebulun, Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. And Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Ahijalon in the country of Zebulon. And after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, a Pirathonite, judged Israel. And he had forty sons and thirty nephews that rode on threescore and ten ass colts. And he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon the son of Hiliel, the Pirathonite, died and was buried in Pirathon, in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amaleks. Chapter 13 And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family, of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bareth not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, Thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. 
very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us, and teach us that what we shall do unto the children that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman, as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with the meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would, have received a, he would not have received a burnt offering, and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as it at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times, in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Estol. Chapter 14 and Samson went down to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. 
and he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well and after a time he returned to take her and turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion and he took thereof in his hand and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion so his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast for so used the young men to do and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought thirty companions to be with him and Samson said unto them I will now put forth a riddle unto you if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments but if ye cannot declare it me then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments and they said unto him put forth thy riddle that we may hear it and he said unto them out of the eater came forth meat and out of the strong came forth sweetness and they could not in three days expound the riddle and it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire have ye called us to take that we have is it not so and Samson's wife wept before him and said thou dost but hate me and lovest me not thou hast put forth a riddle unto the ch children of my people and hast not told it me and he said unto her behold I have not told it my father nor my mother and shall I tell it thee and she wept before him the seven days while the feast lasted and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him and she told the riddle to the children of the people and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion and he said unto them if ye had not plowed with my heifer ye had not found out my riddle and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ashkelon and slew thirty men of them and took spoil took their spoil and gave change of garment unto them which expounded the riddle and his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house but Samson's wife was given to his companion whom he had used as his friend chapter 15 but it came to pass within a while after in the time of the wheat harvest that Simon that Samson visited his wife with a kid and he said I will go in to my wife into the chamber but her father would not suffer him to go in and her father said I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her therefore I gave her to thy companion is not her younger sister fairer than she take her I pray thee instead of her and Samson said concerning them now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines though I do them a displeasure and Samson went and caught three hundred foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails and when he had set the brands on fire he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives then the Philistines said who hath done this and the answer is Samson the son-in-law of the Timnit because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion and the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire and Samson said unto them though ye have done this yet will I be avenged of you and after that I will cease and he smote them hip and thigh with the great slaughter and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi and the men of Judah said why are ye yet come up against us and they answered to bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he hath done to us then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to Samson knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us 
What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me, that ye will not fall upon me yourself. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and brought him upon, up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hand. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called the place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore thirst, and called on the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst, and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout, and when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in Hakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. Chapter 16 Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gates of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs, that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green withs, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs, as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto him, Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new rope, that never were occupied, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new rope, and bound him therewith, and said unto them, Him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chambers. And he brake them from off his arm like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weave the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of sleep, and went away with the pen of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. 
And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto him, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak, and be like a, any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out, as at other times before, and shake myself. And he was not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, and put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together, for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our god hath delivered Samson our enemy into our hands. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered him into our hands, our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, and they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him before the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistine for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle, middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was bore up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his fathers came down and took him and buried him up, and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Esteol in the burying place of Manoah his father, and he judged Israel twenty years. Chapter 17 And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah, and he said, unto his mother the eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee about which thou cursedest and spakest of also in mine ears behold the silver is with me i took it and his mother said blessed be thou of the lord my son and when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother his mother said i had wholly dedicated the silver unto the lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image now therefore i will restore it unto thee yet he restored the money unto his mother and his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image and they were in the house of micah and the man micah had a house of god and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man out of the Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem Judah to sojourn where he could. 
find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he sojourned. And Micah said unto him, Whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite as my priest. Chapter 18 In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danaanites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zorah and from Estelah, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go and search the land. Who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man the Levite, and they turned in thither, and said unto him, Who brought thee hither, and what makest thou in this place, and what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way, wherein ye go. Then the five men departed, and came to Laish, and saw the people that were therein, and how they dwelt careless, careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. And there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians, and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshtoel, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go, and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land. For God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zorah, and out of Eshtoel, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched in kerjath Jerim, in Judah, Wherefore they called that place Mehanidan until this day. Behold, it is behind kerjath Jerim, And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim, and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephob, and a teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned thither, and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up, and came in thither, and took the graven image, and the ephob, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house, and fetched the carved image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the, young, the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? 
And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephob and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou cometh with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made, and the priest, and ye are gone away, and what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me, What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priests which he had, and came to Laish unto the people that were at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burned the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lieth by Beth Rehob that they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dad, Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan the son of Gershom, and the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up, Micah's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Sanctify these truths in our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Try, 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 Jesus. Try, 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 Jesus. When you've tried everything and everything has failed, try, my Jesus. Try, Jesus. Man.